absolutely gracious to let us all participate in this. For those of us that got to visit the archives, it's, it's really, really special thing. He's got these big empty books that he bought from the property of U.S. Air Force after he was in the, he, he was in the Air Force uh, for at four different airfield bases in the United States. So somewhere along the lines, he picked up these dozen empty notebooks and he keeps them with him. And in the 50s, he's just sitting there Stack of lyrics, pot of glue, and he's gluing his lyrics in, he's illustrating them. It seems like he created something every day, so there's this staggering creative output, you know, and I, I, I probably only, I was there maybe five days total, and probably only got through about, you know, maybe a quarter of the stuff there, so it's, it's, it's really astounding. Most of the material in the collection begins in 1940. We have some items from the late 30s, and that's that notebook that Woody used, that KFBD radio that some of the songs on the album are from. But for the most part, when Woody met Marjorie, the woman who was to become his second wife, and they had a stable home together in New York, all of these material was just in their home. So it wasn't a matter of going around and collecting it and finding it. Uh, although we do receive donations uh, every few months, a couple times a year, people will send us a notebook or a lyric or a letter from Woody to their parent, or a piece of artwork that Woody made for them when they were born. Um, but all of the material in the collection, the artwork, the lyrics, the notebooks, um, all of Woody's personal papers, were in the family home, and we have over 10,000 pages in the collection. He just generated a, a lot of stuff. It was just kind of amazing to see how he would move lyrics from one notebook to another, how he would do something that was just very typed and very straight, and then other things that were just scraps of pieces of paper that he wrote on. You know, one of the things that I found was uh, he was in the Merchant Marine during the Second World War, and on one side was a menu for what was up for supper that night in the ship, and the other side he had written just a couple lines, you know, and he just stuck it in his bag or something like that and made it all the way back there. The energy he put into everything, it's like you can still feel it dancing off the, the page, you know, off, off, you know, the things you're looking at. It's like you can it's like instead of just writing something down, he like really wrote it down or something, you know, and like sprayed some paint on the page too, and it, you can really feel it. And for me, when I was going through the archives, it was, uh, I almost wasn't thinking about it. You would just see little things that would catch your eye, you know, because there was just so much stuff to look at. And you could, you could sit there and look at one thing for 10 minutes, but you're also like, have this stack that's this high, you know, that you have to kind of get through. And it was just, uh, it, was, it was pretty, it was an intense feeling to kind of go through all that stuff.